What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts. This video is going to be all about warning labels. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me this and the most common question I get is, are we required to put warning labels on our candles? So the answer is no, but yes. I know I hate it when people do that because it sounds like double talk. But the reason I've given you a two-part answer is because there's really two sets of laws that we have to concern ourselves with. On one hand, we've got criminal law. Then on the other hand, we've got civil law, also known as case law, or as it applies to us, tort law. So let's go ahead and talk about criminal law first. So currently there's no federal statute that requires us to put warning labels on our candles. Instead, what we have are known as industry standards. Uh, basically standards set forth by the candle making industry of what our candles should be and what they should look like, what should be on them. Now I'll cover what the industry standard is for warning labels at the end of the video. But for now, just know that uh, it's basically a set of standards accepted by the candle making industry. Those standards are set forth by the American Society for Testing and Materials. Uh, for those of you that want to look it up, it's uh, ASTM F2058. Okay. And those standards are accepted by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Now, while they're not an actual regulatory law, they're kind of accepted as the law of the land. Now, there is a petition by the National Association of State Fire Marshals to actually have those in industry standards become federal regulatory law. But at the last meeting of the uh, CPSC, that petition was tabled, and as of this date, no action has been taken on that petition. So the short answer is no. They're not legally required. Uh, no one's going to show up in a patrol car, inspect your candle shop, take you to jail, or write you out a bunch of tickets if you don't have warning labels on your candles. Basically, it's like this. The government can't regulate everything. As much as they'd like to, they just can't. There's so much going on, they can't be everywhere. So what industries do is they accept industry standards as the law of the land for their industry, basically self-police to keep the government from coming in and regulating their industry. Um, creates a lot less hassle for them and everything just runs a lot smoother without the government in your business. Now let's talk about civil law or tort law. Now I always like to tell people that when you sell a candle you have to imagine that you're selling it to the least common denominator. That's kind of a nice way of saying a stupid person. So let's set the scenario for you. This person buys your candle, takes it home, lights it, sets it up under their curtains, catches their house on fire, the house burns down, they sue you. Now you're thinking, well that's not fair. I didn't do anything wrong, my candle wasn't defective. This person was the one that uh, burned down their house. I wasn't negligent, okay. Sounds logical, but they're not gonna sue you for negligence they're gonna sue you for your breach of duty, your duty to warn. Let's talk about what that means. Basically, tort laws establish that manufacturers have a duty to warn against the foreseeability of dangers associated with the common use of their products. So to apply that to our scenario, basically, I can foresee that setting, your, that setting one of my candles up under your curtains is gonna catch them on fire and burn your house down. That's something that I can assume would happen with the common use of my product by someone that wasn't warned not to do that. Sounds like common sense, but I can tell you from my own experience for the 22 years I spent in law enforcement, occasionally I would have to sit in in civil court as a bailiff, and I can tell you that in civil court, common sense does not always apply. So it sounds crazy, but because of that foreseeability of danger with the common use, we do have to warn people not to set our candles near something that can catch fire. Now America likes to go overboard with their warning labels, but they've actually done us a favor in this wording. They put in that term, common use of our products. So common use of my product would be taking it home and lighting it. Now, if you wanted to take that to the extreme, I can say that taking one of my candles to the top of the Sears Tower, firing it down on somebody's head, is gonna kill them. But because they've got that term in there, foreseeability of dangers associated with the common use of our product, you can see that taking one of my candles up to the top of the Sears Tower and throwing it at somebody, it's not considered common use. So therefore, I don't have to warn people not to throw my candles off of skyscrapers. So let's break it down further to what actually happened in court. Now, in order to bring a breach of duty lawsuit, four things have to be established. The petitioner has to establish that there has to be a duty owed to the other person. Well, we've already established that I have a duty to warn against the foreseeability of dangers associated with common use. Okay. They have to establish that there was a breach of that duty. That breach would be not warning them. There has to be damages. They had to burn their house down, basically. 
uh, just because you fail to put a warning label on something, if nothing bad happens, there's no basis for the lawsuit. And they have to establish that the damages were caused by the breach of that duty. So basically, they're going to go into court and say, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to set my candle up under the curtains because you didn't warn me. So the great thing about that is you take away any one of those elements and there's no basis for the lawsuit. If they don't burn their house, they can't sue you for burning down their house, obviously. And if you've got warning labels on your product, they can't prove a breach of duty because you've put that warning label on there to warn them. So that's where our yes comes in. As far as tort law is concerned, yes, we do have that duty to warn. Yes, we need to be putting warning labels on our candles. Now that's going to take worst case scenario for this to come into play, but you don't want to be the one caught up in it because when it goes bad, it's going to go really bad. So although technically not required by law, it's definitely something that you should be doing. So let's talk about what those industry standards actually are. And I'm going to write them out in the description. I'm going to leave links so you can go look at them for yourself. But they're basically this. Warning labels have to be on the candle at the time of sale. Label has to be on there. Common sense. Cannot be covered or obstructed. Has to be placed on the top, bottom, or sides. I don't know where else you put it. And it has to be visible to the buyer. Well, if it's on the top, bottom, or sides, obviously they're going to hopefully see it has to be printed in contrasting colors basically means you want to stick with black and white red and white something that's going to be a good contrast you don't want to do a, a black label with dark gray writing where it's hard to read so basically just the writing has to be easy to read and it has to be visually different from any other information on your candle so you don't want to use the same font or anything to actually make it look like a product label it has to be identifiable as a warning label and the minimum dimensions have to be 10 millimeters by 23 millimeters uh, most of them are actually round, so if you were to try to visualize that, a 23 millimeter radius is basically exactly the same size as a U.S. quarter. At the top, it has to say the word warning, followed by the safety alert symbol, which if you've never seen it, is basically the triangle with the exclamation point in the middle. It's going to look like this. And the industry standards state that there's minimum language that is required. I'm going to go ahead and read it word for word so we don't miss anything. The minimum language required is warning to prevent fire burn candle within sight out of reach of children and pets never on or anything that can catch fire it also states that additional information is encouraged for example if you're selling container candles you're going to want to put on there you know things like don't burn in excess of four hours at a time trim wick to a quarter of an inch things like that the more information you can put on there the better to kind of cover yourself in the long run and that's really all that has to be on there. But you can actually make your own. If you go to the National Candle Association website, there's some pictograms on there that you can take if you want to make it look a little bit more fancy. The easiest thing to do is just buy them. Um, pretty much every major candle supplier sells them. I'm going to leave some links in the description. Um, here's some examples. The wording might be different on a few of them. I know some places you can buy them specifically for soy candles or container candles, whatever other candle that you're selling. Um, really no reason not to be buying these. You can buy them in bulk, um, depending on the quantity that you buy. They're anywhere from three to five cents a piece. It's not a great expense and can definitely save you a lot of hassle in the long run. Right, so there you have it, guys. That was my take on warning labels. Not technically required. Definitely something that you should be doing. I put them on all of my candles. You should too. Hope that helped, and thanks for watching.